Hi everyone, my name is Brooke and I'm a geologist and I'm here on the beautiful island of Iron to look at some of the exciting geology here. Today we're going over to the north of the island and we're going to have a look at the Lagan Cottage Loop. So we're going to see some excellent Carboniferous and Permian sedimentary sequences and have a look at Hutton's Unconformity in the Dalradian rocks. But first we've got to get there and that means passing through the spectacular centre of the island where the Paleogene granite has pushed up the Precambrian Dalradian rocks into these mountains that were then scoured by glaciers in the last ice age. That's a lot of geological history in a relatively short drive and one of the things that makes Aaron so special. As well as the drive, there's a hike over the top of the mountains that were made by those Dalradian rocks that were uplifted by the granite. And if you're as out of shape as I am, there's a bit of a trek, but the views and the rocks make it worthwhile. You might be wondering what Dalradian means. The Dalradian is a suite of metamorphic rocks found in a big stripe across Scotland. They used to be sedimentary and volcanic rocks deposited in the sea when Scotland was on the southern margin of the paleo continent called Laurentia, which was made up of modern day North America and Greenland, as well as Scotland and Northern Ireland. When Laurentia collided with Avalonia, the microcontinent that contained the southern British Isles and bits of eastern Canada, about 400 million years ago, the Dalradian rocks were deformed and metamorphosed. This collision was called the Caledonian Orogeny and it was an important mountain building event in the UK and eastern North America and a step on the way to forming the supercontinent Pangaea. The Dalradian rocks ranged in age from about 600 million years old through to about 450 million years old or Cryogenian to Ordovician age if you prefer. The name Dalradian was derived from the Dalrida which were a large tribe who controlled the area around Arran in ancient times. The Dalradian rocks in Arran are mostly low-grade green schist metasediments that record deposition in deep marine basin that was getting shallower through time. There are also some metavolcanic rocks too. The Dalradian rocks in Arran are divided into low-grade slates and slightly higher-grade phyllites and schists. The green in the green schist rocks comes from the clay mineral chlorite in the metasediments and serpentine and amphiboles in the metavolcanics. Most of the green schists on Aaron are actually blue, grey or black though, like this one here that's full of graphite from organic matter that was in the rock when it was a sediment. Look at that lovely, lovely cleavage and fabric. Fantastic stuff. Our first proper stop is at these fantastic carboniferous sedimentary rocks that show cyclic variations in lithology. First are these sandstones full of large cross beds, ripples, dewatering structures and scours that indicate deposition in a high energy fluvial and deltaic environment. The section here looks like it transitions from a river to a beach and then to a delta out in the sea. In this bedding surface we can see that there's lots of current and wave ripples and then if we look at the rock in section we can see that those ripples are actually cross bedding. So cross bedding is just ripples in cross section. There's some more lovely cross section through ripples, lots of different directions there, so maybe it's changing currents due to tides. Next are these black fossil rich mudstones that indicate that the environment has transitioned from the fluvial deltaic environment to a full marine environment. We know this because the fossils are brachiopods and crinoids which only live in the sea. The black colour comes from organic matter in the sediments. This means that there was a lot of primary productivity happening in the sea in the Carboniferous around Arran. The shells are the yellow bits and are all broken and in specific beds so we can interpret them as having been transported by currents or storms from shallower water. So these mudstones probably represent a deeper offshore area and the fact that they're on top of a shallow water sandstone directly means that they're either the sea level has went up or the land went down pretty quickly. Finally at the top of each cycle are these limestones that are full of marine fossils and sedimentary structures indicating we were back in shallower marine environments again. These fossils look like they died where they lived, so these carbonate environments probably supplied the shells for the deeper offshore black mudstones. These little swirls are from goniotites and they're a type of cephalopod. They're basically the ancestors of ammonites. You can see lots of interbedded cycles of black mud and sandstone here both of which formed in ancient swamps that buried the limestones as the sea level dropped and plants colonised the delta. We know this by finding the fossils of the plants and the coal they left behind and then comparing this to modern day coastal swamps. 
The traces on the other side of the sandstone are from roots and burrows of creatures digging through the sediment. All of these wormy looking tubes are fossil root networks, so there must have been a lot of large plants colonizing the delta at this time. Now these aren't stigmaria, I think these are burrows rather than roots. Uh, that's a root from a, a, an early tree called Sigmaria. The, the tree was a cycad, but... Here's another large root fossil called Stigmaria. The spots were the, where root hairs were attached. Just like modern swamps, Carboniferous swamps had lots of animals living in them. Here, these round circular impressions are probably from some kind of amphibian plodding its way through the mud. And it looked like there was microbial mats growing on the sediment surface too, which is why it looks all wrinkly like old elephant skin. In addition to the amphibian tracks, there are these spectacular tracks made by a giant arthropod called Arthropleura, which was like a millipede, except it was two metres long, uh, which is a bit bigger than modern millipedes. If you look at where Connell is lying down over there, you can see the saw marks where someone tried to cut out and steal the tracks. Luckily, they were unsuccessful. Once you get your eye in, you can see that there are many sets of arthropleura tracks crisscrossing the bed and tracks from other creatures like other arthropods and amphibious fish. The swamps of the Carboniferous of Iron were obviously a pretty busy place. Eventually, the swamps were flooded by the sea again and were returned to deposition of marine limestones. In the UK, we call these cycles cyclothems and they were common in the coal swamps of the Carboniferous. We stopped to look at this curious red limestone that's packed with fossils, including rare trilobites, if we're lucky. We're not sure why it's red. It could be from iron-rich dust blown in during deposition, or it could be from a stain from later weathering or the red sandstones above getting leached. All those white, yellowish, black pebbles are fossils. The bright yellow bits are modern lichens, though. Check out these cute crinoid columns. This was a creature like a starfish on a stalk. The black flakes, though, are phosphatic remains like fish scales and teeth. This means that the sedimentation rates must have been really slow for the fossils to accumulate and collect together like this. There's also corals and lovely net-like bryozoans, and this looks like it could have been some kind of part of a trilobite or arthropod. And this bit's a pygidium, which is basically a trilobite's trilobut. On top of the red limestones, we have these convoluted sandstones, which means that we have reached the top of the Carboniferous sequence on this part of the island and that it correlates or matches with the sequence of Carboniferous rocks on the other side of the island, on the Corrie shore. Except here, rather than going straight into a Permian, there's a whole series of red Carboniferous sandstones, means, which means that there's a load of rocks missing, like we thought, on the Corrie shore. The fact that we've got red sandstones means that our tropical coal swamps have been replaced by subtropical arid environments. And this matches up with what we know about the Carboniferous, which was tropical in the middle part, but in the later part, as the UK and Laurentia, now called Laurusia, the Red Continent, moved into the northern subtropics, we got the spread of the deserts that dominated for much of the Permian and Triassic. But we can look at those red sediments in the next episode, though, because there's too much to look at on the lag and loop to fit into one video. So on that note, I'm going to smoothly ask you to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. You can check out the links below and above for more of the Aaron playlist and videos about cool rocks. If you've got any questions about Aaron or geology, or you've seen some cool rocks and fossils lately, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching, Rock Nerds, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> Oh, it's his feeties. Yeah. Feeties. Yep. Oh. Wiggling its way along. There's only ever. Was it eating detritus? Probably. Snuffling for truffles. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed learning about this. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed about learning. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed about learning. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed. Done.